1955, John Mayasich ended his career as Minnesota's first two-time All-American. With the heart of those championship teams now departed, Mariucci needed reinforcement. An All-American by way of Winnipeg, Murray Williamson, was recruited at a pool hall in Everett. John came in and he was sitting playing pool and he said, do you want to go to school? And I said, uh, Minnesota. And I said, well, I'm on my way to Michigan. He said, come on down and visit and uh, see what we've got. We got down here and went to the ticket office and they didn't have a ticket for me. John had forgotten. So I snuck into the game and uh, after the game I went down to the locker room and looked, uh, there was John looked at me and banged his head and said, he, I, he forgot. As a recruiter, Mariucci offered opportunity. Behind the bench, he insisted on intensity. He demanded a lot. He was hard driving. But technically, uh, tactically during the game, he was not, uh, that was not his strong points, but his ability to get teams up to play, play hard, those were his skills. Play hard and be tough, just like their head coach. One of the players jumped over the board, slammed the, slammed the door, and John Thumb was in there, and he just smashed it, you know. And everybody saw it, and they were all going like this, you know, poor John. <laughs> of course, he wouldn't, he wouldn't let on anybody. He didn't know. Marshall, you got a Band-Aid? I said, yeah, I got one. So I, I started, I said, well, let me look at it. I looked, oh, it looked like hamburger. And man, I would, almost, <laughs> almost painted myself looking at the thing. <laughs> And they said, well, here, we better put something on. I said, no, it's okay. Give me the band. Just put the band-aid on like nothing happened. And he was a tough guy. He really was, you know. He had his few favorites and never called you by your first name and always called you last name. One day he called me Pete and I was happy, you know. <laughs> Leather tough on the outside, warm on the inside, and as stubborn as a cowlick, particularly in defense of his program, Mariucci's fight to level the playing field continued when the WCHA was formed in 1959. We didn't even play everybody in our league. Mariucci and, and Armstrong from Denver were in this little bit about uh, uh, using older players, and so he just refused to play them. So here we have a league, WCHA, where Minnesota doesn't play Denver. You know, I mean, how can you do that? Like most pioneers, Mariucci was unconventional. He did it his way, and it worked. On the ice, his program turned out All-Americans virtually on an annual basis. In 1961, the Gophers again qualified for the NCAA tournament. In the mid-60s, Craig Falkman and Doug Woog twice led Minnesota to the mythical Big Ten Championship. Yet Mariucci's impact will never be measured by wins and losses. It was his program then. In part, it still is and always will be.